Okay, so we've met 3 p.m. here on this Thursday afternoon. We have got 60 minutes together of invigorating yoga flow. So if you have any injuries, any areas of the body that you're going to be a bit more mindful of, just notice those now and be very mindful of those areas of the body as we flow through. We are going to be starting off with a little bit of breath work to invigorate um, the nervous system, the body, the mind, the whole, whole shebang. And then we're going to move into um, a yoga flow and then we'll do a guided meditation lying down. So to begin with, I shall meet you on the mat. Feel free to have a cushion from the bed or a towel rolled up for um, a seat to begin with. So we're going to start in a seated place, a, cho a, a choice seat. So whatever feels good in the body, that might be a crossed leg, or it might be more of a Bernese pose stacking the ankles, or you might feel more comfortable coming to the knees. So making your choice as to how you want to begin your practice. So welcome in everyone. My name is Abby from the Yoga Impact Charity, and we're here to provide you an invigorating wake up, shake it out kind of yoga flow to draw you back into your inner sanctuary while feeling alive. Because I know how it is when you're in the same space, you almost feel like you can become part of that room, part of the furniture. And this is an opportunity to get the body moving, the mind moving, and to look in the, in the inner, inner environment, as well as connecting into the body and the breath. So we're gonna start with the hands to the thighs, and we're just gonna wake up the shoulders by rolling them up and down. It might be forward and back. And then changing the direction, just waking into the shoulders. Beautiful. And then getting the neck involved. So it might be a release of chin to chest, then rolling up one way, chin to chest, rolling up the other way. You might do a full circle, creating a circle in space with the nose. A few circles that way, just checking in with the neck, the shoulders, and then changing direction, heading in the other way. Two more circles this side. And then coming back through to center, finding the crown of the head elevated towards sky. Sit bones grounding down toward earth. And then take a little roll again to soften the shoulders. It might be a little shimmy, a little shake your shoulders. Beautiful. Feel free to have your cameras on or off for the whole duration. Always lovely to see you. Otherwise, if you want to take this into your own space, feel free to have it off. So we're going to begin with a little grounding and centering together to observe the movements of the mind. So coming into your seat of choice, finding the hands firming down, allow the eyes to close, the eyelids to soften and drape over the eyeballs, and then allowing the jaw to release the tongue, the lips, feel spaciousness through the eyebrows, the forehead spaciousness for the ears, the top of the head, back of the head. There's all this new space around you. And then as you start your practice here, closing down the eyes, invite a visualization of your perfect place to practice yoga. Now, it might not be in the room that you're in, so you can get imaginative. I want you to take a few moments to really find that space. Maybe there's a yoga studio that you go to. Maybe you'd like to do this yoga practice by the waterfall. So just getting in tune in the mind's eye with a place that is perfect for your yoga practice. Imagining the sounds around you in that space. Imagining the fragrances, perhaps there's a certain Perhaps there's a certain scent in the air. If it's nature, it might be the smell of the flowers. If it's your yoga studio of choice, it might be an incense that they like to burn. Just taking the first few moments to really paint that picture in the mind's eye of your perfect yoga sanctuary. A place of calm, a place of peace, a place where you can move freely, connecting inward to your body. Allowing that image to settle and then starting to draw your awareness now into your breath. And if you're familiar with your yoga practice, 
you know that this is called pranayama, our life force. So we check in with the breath and we see if we can start to lengthen and smooth out the breath. Notice if there's any edginess, any tightness, any stuckness. And with each breath in, imagine you're bringing in fresh new energy into your body, into the room around you. And as you breathe out, you release any stagnancy that dissolves in midair. So you might use those words, breathing in, I am full of vitality. Breathing out, I release stagnancy. Breathing in, I am full of vitality. Breathing out, I release stagnancy. And you might even simplify that to imagining the word vitality with the in-breath and the word stagnancy with the out-breath. And just notice how those two words sit within the body, vitality, stagnancy. And then notice how you are actually feeling in this moment. If you're closer to feeling vital or you're closer to feeling stagnant and hold space for that to transform through our practice. To go on a little bit more into the mind's eye, you might start to draw an image of a color, that vital energy coming in, finding a color of your choice, breathing it deep into the lower lungs. And as you breathe out, imagining a color for stagnancy, perhaps it's a gray or a murky green, releasing it out. Imagining that color coming in one way, transforming within you and being released in another way. Then allowing that mantra to be dissolved, they're gonna to start to work into the breath a little bit more. So releasing whatever breath you've got in your lungs, let it go, let it go, let it go. And then breathe in, two, three, four, five. Breathe out, two, three, four, five. Breathe in, two, three, four, five. Breathe out, two, three, four, five. Continue with your own rhythm. If five feels too long or if it feels too short, change the number so it suits you. And if you want to experience something a little bit different today, take a pause at the top of the breath before releasing. And you might explore playing with the length of that pause to match the length of the breath coming in and going out. Kumbhaka, breath retention, creating space in the mind body. Taking three more rounds of that beautiful breath. Imagine you're breathing in the breeze, breathing in the ocean air, all that is coming to you in a matter of days on its way. And then we're gonna bring our hands into our heart center in prayer pose, Anjali Mudra. So the palms are meeting in the heart center and the thumbs are drifting into the center of the chest. Feel a gentle lift of the elbows and a rolling down and back of the shoulder heads. Lengthen the crown of the head upward, feel the space between the vertebrae. Soften the jaw, soften the gaze within. And what we're gonna to do to stimulate our vagus nerve, which is in charge of a lot of the mind-body connection, we're gonna do three hums. 
Now, don't worry about the people around you. It's a good time for this. Maybe the midday nap stop. No one's going to sleep just yet, hopefully. So we're going to do three hums. And I want you to commit to it. Full body, full experience. So taking a full breath in. Release the breath through the mouth. Just let that one go. Breathing in to prepare for our first hum. Hmm. Breathing in. Hmm. Breathing in for the final one, preparing the lungs. Mm. Letting it go. Take a full breath in through the nose. Breathe out. Bow your head to your heart. Find one word to summarize the reason that you um, came to this practice online. It might be the word invigorate. It might be the word connection. It might be the word move, breathe. So find one word that resonates in your heart space and make it a vow of your heart and mind, a sankalpa, to move through the practice with that intention in the heart space. Coming back to that tension when you wander off where the mind goes, come back to that anchor of our sankalpa. And then gently lifting up the head, lifting up the heart, blinking the eyes open. Fantastic, you've arrived in your your new yoga studio or the nature space here for our practice. So coming off the support that you're on, allowing that to be moved off to the side for now, we're going to start on our hands and knees on our tabletop position. So the knees coming under the hips, wrist creases coming under the shoulder heads, and then take a little hug of the lower stomach toward the spine. Feel the crown lengthening forward and the tailbone drifting back. We're going to move into our cat cows. Inhale, bend the elbows, lift the heart, drift the tailbone up, looking straight ahead. Exhale, dome the spine, chin toward the chest, lower the tailbone toward the ground and release the crown to the earth too. Pressing hands in, inhale, coming through to our cow pose, broaden the collarbones, lengthen and arch the front body, exhale, dome, lengthen and expand the back body pressing into the hands to find a little bit more space. Take three or four more rounds now, just moving with your own breath rhythm and see what happens if you allow the breath to be the engine. So you don't move until the breath tells you to. Now it's easy to want to go a little bit quicker, but go with the breath. And the breath might be quick, so listening in. See if you can extend it if not. From here, we have an option to sustain that movement forward and back. Feel free to close the eyes. Otherwise, freestyling, you might get the hips involved. They might draw circles. You might flip the wrists and reach and stretch out the wrists a little bit. You might sink back and sink forward. So just finding your freedom here on your hands and your knees, like fluid movement, like the waves of the ocean, fluid, buoyant, powerful. Allowing yourself to just move freely, intuitively, knowing that there's a place within you, your true self, that always knows what you need in each given moment. Tapping into that. Beautifully done, everyone. Coming back to a neutral tabletop on your hands and your knees, all fours. And then press the left hand down into the mat or the carpet or whatever you're on and feel the index finger and the thumb knuckle pressing down. Activate the forearm and the upper arm all the way into the shoulder head and then inhale, reach the right hand up. Take a full breath in, fill into the rib cage. Exhale, thread the hand through and under, float the head off the ground, gazing over to the left. Inhale, reach that right hand back up, threading the needle pose. We're going to take three more pulses. Exhale, we move down. Keep the breath nice and long. Fill into the rib cage. Inhale, reaching up. 
full expression of the shape, fingertips expanding. Exhale, we back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pulse down. You've got one more here. Inhale. Exhale, beautifully done. We're going to pause at the bottom. So you're going to place the temple of your head to the earth. And you're going to keep drifting the hips up and back. Now the left hand can stay on the ground. It could reach up toward the top uh, over your head on the ground. Or you can reach it up toward the sky. We're here for three smooth and full breaths. Release the jaw, release the tongue, release the forehead. And then gently bring the left hand down to the ground, press into the earth and allow that right hand to trickle back through tabletop. Making any movements you need after that might feel good to ripple the spine a little bit. And then we'll take it to the other side. Right hand spreads wide, index knuckle and thumb knuckle firm down, forearm switches on, upper arm switches on, inhale, left hand reaches up, feel the heart space broadening. Exhale, threading through. Now you know the movement. Take yourself through three more pulses. Allow the breath to guide you. Find your flow. And when you come to the bottom on this one, whichever side you've gone to, allow the temple of the head to meet the ground. Keep the neck expansive, lifting and lengthening through the tailbone, back and up. Right hand can come up overhead or up toward the sky. We're here for three more smooth and expansive breaths. Breathing in vitality, breathing out stagnancy. Beautifully done. Lowering the right hand back to the place just in front of the face, pressing into the ground, slowly peeling up through the left hand. Again, any free movement that feels good, heading there. Then we're going to take the knees nice and wide, bring the big toes to touch, sink the hips back, stretch the hands forward, child's pose, wide knee version. Allow the forehead to soften down toward the ground. To keep this a little bit more active for an invigorating flow, keep lifting up through the elbows and pressing the pads of the hands and fingers into the ground. It might feel good to release the neck by rolling left and right through the forehead. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna find a bit of fluidity moving through a few shapes together. As you inhale, Lift up the torso, but round the spine in our cat pose and shift forward. Exhale, arch the spine into cow and then sink the hips down and back into child's pose. Beautiful. Inhale, round the spine, ripple forward. Exhale, arch the spine, tailbone takes you back to child's pose. You've got three more rounds. Use your breath. Find that fluidity, find the freedom through the movement. Beautifully done, everyone. And then as you come back to your child's pose, you're going to take a little side stretch. So walk the hands over to the right, allow the forehead to come back down to the ground. You can be on the fingertips or the hands. And we're just going to reach and breathe into the left side body. So allowing the left lungs, the left rib cage to expand deeply. And as you exhale, feel the hips growing a little bit heavier. One more breath here, doing so beautifully. And gently coming back through to the center. Take a moment of pause just to recalibrate the spine. 
And then we'll take it to the other side, hands reaching over to the left, staying on the fingertips, and then placing the forehead back down. Allowing the right lungs, the right ribcage to expand deeply and expand brightly. One more full breath here. Beautiful. Coming back through the centre, take one more round here in our child's pose. Full breath in and a full breath out. Gently use the hands to walk up through the spine. We're going to bring our knees together. Now, option one here in our Vajrasana, our hero's pose, is to stay with the feet to the ground if that's more comfortable. Otherwise, you can tuck your toes under, coming to a bit of a toe stretch as well as what we're going to be adding on. You might feel that and think, actually, that's that's not good for me right now. And then come back into the previous one. So from here, we're going to take our arms to cactus. So take an inhale, reach the hands up overhead. Exhale, bend the elbows, spread the fingers wide. So we're coming into a beautiful expanded shape. Elbows are buoyant and active. Yes. And then hinge the left shoulder, bring the hand and the arm in front of you. And then draw the right elbow on top of the left. Either bind the hands just to the back or wrap the hands around each other for our eagle arms. So option one is to just remain here. You might be breathing into the space between the shoulder blades. If you want to go a little further with this, join me with a bit of pulsing. We inhale, lift the elbows, lift the heart, keep the neck nice and long, gazing to the wrists. Exhale, dome the spine, just like that cat-cow movement, but with the arms now as sat. Inhale, lifting and lengthening, breathing between the shoulder blades. Exhale, doming and diving. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, come back through the center. Exhale, unravel the arms. Beautiful. You might take some rolls of the elbows one way and the other just to free that up a little bit. And then we're going to hinge the right shoulder, draw the hand in front of you, left elbow on top, same goes. Back of the hands, all wrapping around and finding a full bind for your eagle arms. If the toes are already talking to you, if you're in your toe stretch, feel free to lift them up and place them down. Beautiful. You'll feel the sensations pulsating down there. We've just nourished the kidney and the bladder through that pose. Take an inhale, lift the elbows, open the heart, gaze up. Exhale, buoyant breath as you dome dive. Two more pulses with your breath in your time. Beautiful. Coming back through the center with the inhale. Exhale, unravel the arms, cactus, finding that movement, elbows rolling in circles forward and then back. Beautiful. Hands come behind the back now, interlace the fingers. So they're just behind the shoulder blades are hugging in. We're going to take both hands over to the right rib cage. The right elbow draws out to the side and then you lower the ear toward the hands. So the same ear as the side of the hands, the so right ear to the right shoulder. So we're just getting gently into the neck a little bit. You might draw the chin toward the chest. You might nod, you might move a little bit, the chin, and just find a little bit of movement stretching into the neck there. Might feel good just to be still for two breaths. And then gently lift the head back through the center, take the hands to the opposite side. Gently lowering the left ear to the left shoulder. And again, you might be still, or you might find a little bit of movement through the neck. So just warming the body, priming it before we get into more of the dynamic style of our practice. Coming back through the center, fabulous. Hands come back and behind you, they're still interlaced. And we're gonna take a forward fold, just like this. Take a full breath in, lift the heart. Exhale, bow forward, forehead toward the earth, doesn't matter if it touches. And then gently lift the hands up toward the sky. 
Now, if you want to go to the next phase with me, you might draw the top of the head to the ground and you might lift the hips, bringing a little bit of weight to the top of the head. You might feel good to gently draw the weight forward and back on the head, feeling the weight moving through the top of the head. Two more breaths wherever you are. Wonderful, whole, perfect and complete just as you are. Gently lowering the hips, lowering the hands, slowly, slowly rolling up through the spine. Release the hands, inhale, sweep them up to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. We're going to bring our hands forward, tabletop position. Give the ankles a little rotation, picking the feet up and rolling them one way and the other way. Nicely done. Keeping the hands a little further forward of your tabletop now, tuck the toes under. You're going to get gently into the core, she says, gently, but we're going to create a little bit of inner fire. So here, lengthen the spine, hug the navel toward the, the back body, take a full breath in. Exhale, lift the knees. So we're hugging the knees up and off the ground, just a couple of centimeters. We're lengthening through the tailbone, lengthening through the base of the spine. And we're going to inhale, flex the right foot and drift it up, 90 degree angle. Take a full breath in. Exhale, draw the right knee to the right tricep. Inhale, press the foot up and back. Exhale, lower the foot to the ground. All the while, the other knee is lifted. Inhale, left foot lifts up. Exhale, knee to left tricep. Inhale, up and back. Exhale down. Take yourself through one more round each side. Inhale, right foot. Exhale, right tricep. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, left foot. Exhale, tricep. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower it. From here, lift the hips. Downward dog. Beautiful. You might pick up the hands and pat them into the ground after that, rolling one wrist and the other. And then gazing now between your feet or your thighs, you can take a gentle walk out, bending one knee and then the other knee. Beautiful. Just finding a little bit of movement. You might move that quite quickly if that feels good to do. Keeping the neck nice and long here. Beautifully done. Now, if the spine is rounding, it's better to keep a bend to the knee so then you can lengthen up through the hands all the way to the sit bones. Soften the jaw, soften the neck. We're going to take four breaths in a static downward dog. So see if you can keep your focus within your breath or keep your focus between your thighs or your toes. Long, spacious neck. Two more breaths. Just like we did in our tabletop, hug the index finger, knuckle, and the thumb knuckle down. It's going to protect your wrist, especially if you're on a surface that isn't that supportive for you. Beautifully done, everyone. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet, and then exhale, lower the hips and heart in one long line, high plank pose. Now hug the thighs up to the sky, embracing the muscle to the bone. Now, in our plank pose, we want the entire body to be switched on. So the entire body is activated. Hands are pressing into the ground. Arms are hugging in. Heels are pressing back. Take one more full breath in. Exhale, hips to the sky, downward facing dog. So nice. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, high plank. Inhale here. Exhale, hips up, downward dog. Take one more like that. Inhale, lifting up to the balls. Exhale, high plank. Inhale to be here. Exhale, hips to spine. Beautiful. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, ripple through to a high plank. Shift the weight forward now so the shoulders are over the wrists. Lower the knees. Untuck the toes. Hug the elbows in as you lower all the way down. Allow the forehead to touch the ground, point the toes, and then lift the thighs so they're hugging into the muscle, the bone. Magnetize the elbows in toward each other. Take a full, full breath in, lift the head, lift the heart, baby cobra. Keep pressing the feet actively into the ground. 
Exhale, softening down. Two more pulses. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. Press the toes into the ground, flex the feet, pressing back child's pose with toes tucked. Two breaths here. And then inhale, tabletop position. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths to welcome yourself home into your body, home into the present breath awareness. Be completely here. Nicely done. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, soften the knees. Look to the hands, step to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands can come to the shins or the thighs. Exhale, bow down. Now we're heading into ragdoll. So the feet might come hip width distance. Bring the hands to the elbows, release the neck. Bend the knees, bend the hips. And it might feel good to sway left and right. You might bob the head yes and no. And then releasing the hands from the elbows, press the feet down and slowly start to lift up through the spine. Take your time. When you arrive up at the top of your mat, take a full breath in, roll the shoulders up and back. Exhale to be here. Now you might place yourself on the mat so you've got a lovely view of something ahead of you. It might be outdoors, it might be in the room. But finding your drishti, your focus point, something ahead of you that you can see beautifully and clear. We're going to move through Sari Namaskara A, our sun salutations, three or four rounds. And then we're going to build up a bit of pace as well. So take a full breath in, sweep the hands up and overhead, reaching broadly to the sky. Exhale, bow down, Uttanasana, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, lifting hands to shins or thighs, rolling shoulder heads down and back, long spine. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step one foot back, then the other plank pose. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Exhale, lower down, hug the elbows. Option to drop the knees or keep them lifted. Inhale, baby cobra or cobra. If you're going cobra, the feet can come apart. You can press into the hands. Exhale, downward facing dog, your way of getting there. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, soften the knees, look to the hands, step to the top. Inhale, halfway. Exhale to bow. Inhale, rise, hands to sky. Exhale, we'll flow into round two, bowing down like a waterfall, trickling forward. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, high to low plank. So you might take a moment in Chaturanga, that halfway place, hugging the elbows deep. Option to move into upward dog if that's available, lifting the thighs, pressing the heart forward, hugging the feet to the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog, hips moving up and back. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, soften the knees, look to the hands, step to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, rise, hands to sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands to the ground, high to low plank. Hover in that midway point, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog or cobra, lifting the thighs if you're up doggy. 
Exhale, hips to sky, downward dog. Got one more full round. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, soften the knees, look to the hands, step to the top. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, rise, hands to sky. Exhale, fold freely, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the earth. If it's a jump in your practice, have it there. If not, stepping back. If you're jumping, elbows are bent, moving straight to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breath in, down dog. Notice how your breath has changed from when we sat together and we got our breath in a nice rhythm. See if you can come back to that equal breath in, equal breath out. For a count of five, less or more, whatever feels good. Just monitor it for a few rounds. And then pressing down the left foot into the ground, whatever part of the foot is in contact with the earth, throw it down. Inhale, reach the right foot slowly up and back. Three-legged dog. Flex the right foot and then lower the toes toward the ground. So the pinky toe is toward the earth. And then reach the heel back and up in space. Exhale, bend the knee and stack the hips. So we're coming to our scorpion legs. The hands and the shoulders in exactly the same place they were in downward dog. So if you corkscrewed the upper back, keep it nice and strengthened and long. Keep pressing through the right knee to the sky. Take a full breath in. Extend the right foot so the leg is long here in the hip opener. Exhale, draw the knee to the chest. Look to the hands. Step the foot through. Lower the left knee to the ground. Untuck the left toes. Make sure that the right ankle is directly under the right knee. And then with an inhale breath, you lift up the hands, open the heart, feel the front foot pressing into the ground. Now both hips are squaring to the top of the mat or to where your head is. Hands are reaching up. And then you might take a little roll through the shoulders. So we want to find that balance between effort and ease. We don't want to be so tense and so focused. We want to find a bit of surrender within the shape, even though the feet and the legs are working to keep us here. Take a full breath in here. Exhale, hands to the earth. Now we're going to take a little bit of a pulse in half Hanuman. So it's the right hip crease that starts to draw back and we straighten into the right leg. Right toes are flexed up toward the face. You can have your fingertips to the earth somewhere that is convenient and then take a full breath in here exhale bend the knee draw the heart forward inhale here exhale pulse it back take two more pulses inhale come forward exhale move back you might bow your head towards your, your knee or your shin inhale forward exhale back we're going to take a few breaths here in this folded variation of our half panama, our half split pose. Release the neck, release the jaw. Keep flexing into that front foot and then breathe through the, the back of the leg. So feel the breath drawing down into the back of the leg. Gently bending that front knee, coming forward, hands to the ground. Set the right foot back, plank pose. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga, hug the elbows. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pressing now the right foot into the ground. Inhale, left foot slowly lifts. Feel the foot flex, the whole body switches on. Every cell in the body feeling full of vitality full of line, exhale, bend the knee, stack the hips open, 
Flex the left foot and draw it toward the right glute. Hug the hands into the ground and draw the shoulders up and away from the hands. Take a full breath in, extend the left foot long, opening through the hip. Exhale, knee to the chest, look to the hands, step the foot through. Lower the right knee to the ground. Untuck the toes. Inhale, lifting the hands, pressing that front foot down so we're not fully collapsing into the right hip flexor. We're staying engaged through the lower body. And when we root down through the feet and the legs, we find more buoyancy and space through the heart, through the chest, through the neck. So finding that softness here. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, lower the hands to the ground. We'll have our half Hanuman play on this side. So the left hip crease starts to draw back, we flex into the left foot, the leg is extending long. Fingertips to the ground, take a full breath in. Exhale to be here. Inhale, bend the knee, draw the heart forward, coming into a bit of a lunge. Exhale, bow and dive forward. Inhale, pulsing, bending the knee. Exhale, draw it back. We've got one more of these. Inhale. Exhale. We're going to stay for a few breaths in our forward fold, keeping the left foot flexed, toes toward the face. Soften the jaw, soften the breath, balance of effort and ease. And gently bending into that front knee, hands to the ground, tuck the right toes, plank position, one long one. Inhale, send the weight forward, exhale, lower down. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing. Three breaths to return to your center, to return to your breath rhythm. And then inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, sink the hips down toward the feet, step or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, rise, hands to sky, pressing the feet down. Exhale, hands to the heart, mountain pose, Tadasana. Now here in Tadasana, take a moment to press down the feet, hug the thighs just like we're in plank pose. And we're going to move into a little bit of a flow with some balancing. So bringing the hands behind the back, just like we did in preparation, interlacing the fingers, squeezing the shoulder heads toward each other, and then bring your weight over into your left foot. Come to the toes of the right, gaze to your focal point, your drishti, and then slowly lift the right knee up, hip height. So we're coming to stalk pose. Keep pressing the left foot down, lifting and lengthening through the spine. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, start to draw the right foot back, coming to flying warrior. So the heart softens parallel toward the ground. You might flex or point the right foot to find a bit more vitality through the body. And then slowly bend the left knee and slowly step the right foot down, coming into our high lunge foot position, keeping the hands interlaced for now. Beautiful. Take a full breath in here. Exhale to be present fully in the mind, body here in this moment. And then pivot the right foot down. So we're warrior one set up. Right heels pressing down, pivoted in toward the midline. Take a full breath in, hug the heart open. Exhale, we're going to hinge forward, coming into our humble warrior. So the hands are still interlaced, the jaw is releasing, and that left hip is going to want to shimmy out to the left, keep drawing it in towards the back line, in toward the midline. Release the neck, release the jaw. 
One more full breath in here. Inhale, lower the hands to the lower spine. Spin to the ball of the back foot and inhale, reach the hands up. Crescent lunge. Ah, freedom through the hands, the shoulders. Exhale, warrior two, opening out. So now we've got a deep bend into the front knee around a 90 degree angle. And the front, the back toes are facing very, very slightly towards the front now. Energy all the way through the back leg. Hands can reach out shoulder height. Vira Bhadrasana two. Bending deep into the front knee, gaze towards your front middle finger now. Take an inhale straight in the front leg, lift both hands up and overhead, dancing warrior. Exhale, warrior two, bending the knee, hands in line with the shoulders. Inhale, reach and rise, dancing warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lifting up. This time, keeping the legs as they are, reach the hands, warrior two, wide. And then reach forward through the left hand, the right hip draws slightly back. And we come into our triangle pose, Trikonasana. So the right hand might come into the inner shin of the right foot, or you might hold on to the shin bone. Right hand reaches up to the sky, and we're pressing through both feet. Keep hugging the hips through into the middle of the body. Reach the right hand up, feel the space between the shoulder blades, the space between the heart, the neck, the ears. Take a full breath in and then reach the right hand up and overhead. Keep pressing now the edge of the right foot down into the ground for a full breath in. Full breath out, warrior two, bend the front knee. Beautiful. Windmill the hands down to the ground. Left goes first, then the right. Spin to the ball of the back foot. Let's rinse that out for a flow. Plank pose. Exhale, lower, half plank. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautifully done. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, soften the knees, look to the hands, step or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, we rise, hands to sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Tadasana, mountain pose, a place of stability, of support, of your center, knowing that through all of this, you are centered, you are here. Let's come to the other side, hands interlace behind you. Bring the weight now into the right foot. Gaze straight ahead. Come to the toes of the left foot and then lift the knee, stalk pose. Taking a few breaths here to find length through the spine, to press through all four corners of the right foot into the ground and to hug the thigh muscle around the bone. Take a full breath in. Exhale, flying warrior. Left foot lengthens back and behind. Heart is parallel to the earth. Warrior three with our arms together. Slowly bend the right knee, slowly lower the left foot, crescent lunge. Beautiful. Full breath in to arrive and a full breath out to be fully present. Pivot the left heel in, coming to a warrior one set up in the legs, bending into the front knee. Then take a full breath in, lengthen and lift the heart. Exhale, hinge through the hips as you fold forward. That right hip drawing in and under. Back to warrior, humble warrior. And this pose is linked to bowing down, to surrendering to what is present, to acting with humility and respect for yourself. And bowing down to nature, knowing that this too shall pass. Everything is temporary. Everything is changing. Inhale, slowly lower the hands to the base of the spine. Pivot to the ball of the back foot. Reach the hands up. Ah, beautiful. Exhale, open out, warrior two. I'm just going to turn to see you. There you go. So now you know that set up, bending into the front knee. Toes pivoting ever so slightly forward. And that back leg is really switched on all the way to the outer edge of the foot. Reaching hands wide from the shoulder heads. Take a full breath in. Exhale, lower the hips just a little bit. 
Gaze to the front middle fingernail. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the hands up and overhead. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach and rise. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach and rise. Keep the feet and legs as they are. Hands coming to shoulder height. Reach the right hand forward, left hip draws back. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Right, back of right hand to inner right shin. Left hand to sky. Or if it felt good to hold on to the bone last time, go for it. So we're drawing the hips in toward the midline. We're engaging the stomach to then open up through the heart. Keeping the gaze either up toward the left fingertips or down to the right toes. For the last few breaths, reaching the left hand up and overhead, pressing into the left foot. Keep drawing it down, take a full breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Windmill the hands down to the earth, right and then left. Step the right foot back, plank pose. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing. Hips to sky. Beautiful. Three breaths here to come back to that sanctuary within. A place within you that's always at rest, always at peace. Inhale, rise to the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the hands, step or hop to the top. Lower the sit bones all the way to the ground. And we're going to take just one final little bit of inner fire before we wind down. So draw the knees to each other, lift the feet, hands coming toward the sky. Invoke pose, Navasana. So lifting the heart, we're lifting the spine. Opening and broadening through the chest. You've got this for three more breaths. Feeling strong, connected, present. And then gently lower the feet. Reach the hands forward. Going to lower all the way down to the ground. Take your time getting there. Beautiful. Enjoy the feeling of the spine meeting the ground. And it might feel good to hug the knees up into the chest for a gentle rock side to side. From here, extending the left leg long, keep the right knee in toward the chest. Left hand comes to the right knee and draws the knee across the body. So you come into the outer edge of the left hip. Feel free to reach the right hand up and overhead for an extra twist and extra stretch. Call recline twist. If you want a little bit more rinsing action through the spine, you might look toward the right hand. Two breaths here. And gently coming back through the center, hugging both knees into the chest and extending the right leg along. Keeping the left knee toward you, right hand to left knee, draw it across the body. Coming to the outer edge of the right hip, left hand might reach up and overhead, and you might gaze to the left fingertips, closing down the eyes for two breaths. Gently coming back through the center, taking one final hug of the knees. It might feel good to rock a little. We're gonna do a little shake out here. So reaching the feet up toward the sky, Hands up toward the sky. It looks a bit like a downward dog, but on our back. And what we're going to do is we're going to shake vigorously for 10 seconds. And it doesn't sound very long, but it feels very long when you're doing it vigorously. So when you are ready, shaking legs and arms for 10, 9, 8, keep going, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one, find stillness, reach the fingers, reach the feet, notice the sensations. Then gently lower the feet all the way down to the bottom, coming to Shavasana, our resting pose. Hands coming out to the sides, palms facing up. Find a soft spot for the head to rest. 
Take the deepest breath that you've taken all week. Deep into the lungs, expand fully, and then release and watch the stagnancy completely dissolve from the body. Taking the next few minutes just to be here in the sanctuary of our inner world, a place of peace, a place of serenity, and a place of deep knowing and trust that this too shall pass. Take your full breath deep into the lower lobes of the lungs. And then let it go, release, release, release. Bring some movement to the toes, the fingers, the ankles and the wrists. And it might feel really good to take a full body stretch, reaching the hands up and overhead, stretching toes to fingers and fingers to toes. And when you're ready, bending the knees and rolling to your favorite side for a moment of pause to simply observe yourself here lying down on the ground within the sanctuary of your yoga practice, within the sanctuary of your breath. And know that this is always here for you, always. Gently using the hands to draw you up, keep the eyes closed or the gaze low coming into your seat of choice. And we'll close by bringing the hands to the heart center in our prayer pose, Anjali Mudra, taking a full breath in through the nose, releasing breath out through the mouth. Inhale to prepare for three hums. Mm. Last one. Take a new beautiful breath in. Exhale, bow your head full of vitality 
full of gratitude for the life that you have. Bowing the head a little further, thank yourself for creating time and space to tap into your yoga practice, to connect the mind, body, and the soul through the practice of yoga. Take a deeper bow to each other, to ourselves and each other, we say namaste. Thank you very much for joining us at the Yoga Impact Charity, our quarantine yoga to invigorate and inspire and also to calm and ground. I hope that you enjoyed your practice and if there's any questions, send them our way. Thank you so much for your practice, Kaya. Thank you.